Hello, and welcome to this overview of digital product release, ServiceNow's new experience for managing the software release process. Now, historically, release teams have been a part of, let's say, central IT. They have worked with project managers that have worked on projects. As those projects get toward the end of their cycle, those projects then get handed off to the release team to manage the releases. Um, and then the release team would go through the release process, validating that everything has been done before working with the change team to get those releases out the door. Now, as this process has moved from being a centrally managed process to one where the teams themselves are managing the release process, this is causing issues. We're hearing from our customers about the complexity of, of release and how they have more validations that need to take place. And there's a lack of automation to ensure that we have done everything that's necessary in order to get the release out the door. And it's taking more and more time. Also, as teams have taken over the responsibility of validating their releases, those teams don't always know how they're being judged to say whether or not their releases are ready. Um, also, as a result of this federation of the release process, um, the central teams have a lot less visibility into what's going on and what releases are coming. And this, as change is usually the last gate before deployment, this tends to make the release process um, more burdensome because we want to ensure that these releases going out are not going to cause uh, downtime. So with digital product release, we are looking to help that by providing visibility into the process, helping to automate these uh, policies and help your teams to do more faster. So really our vision is to be your release process orchestrator, enabling the teams to consistently uh, deliver these releases, uh, providing visibility into the process, making sure that we automate everything we can, really so that we get the benefits that governance gives without the overhead that it typically incurs. And the way we do this is by allowing you to define within DPR your release process. Uh, we have release templates where you can use a variety of release processes based on your needs. And those templates allow us to say, what are our phases? And then for each phase, what are the activities we need to do? Whether they are tasks where we need to do something, maybe get an approval. And what are the policies to say, we're ready to move on to the next phase of our release. And these policies, can be backed by data within ServiceNow or through third-party integrations. That way we're able to automate the checks to say, have we done everything that's necessary before we go to deploy and get that, that change out the door. So with that, let's now move on to a, a demonstration to see how this works. So now let's take a look at my instance running digital product release. So DPR is a new experience that can be found under the Workspaces tab of ServiceNow as the Digital Product Release Workspace. We wanted to create an experience that was tailored for how we manage the software delivery process. And as I was saying uh, earlier in the presentation, one of the pieces of feedback that we were hearing is we can really lose what's going on uh, with these complex releases that we're now managing. So we wanted to start with a home screen that would help you to know what you need to do, where you need to focus. Now, as my user, Joe, Joe has a variety of roles, uh, including an administration role. So if you have the administration role, you will actually be able to be guided through the setup process because digital product release is more of a turnkey solution where we really need to know things like who are approvals going to go to? What are the policies that you want to leverage, including policies that ship with our content pack? We need to know what your process looks like and how to create templates for it. And then if you have a central calendar you maintain, you would be able to create the, the calendar with the readiness targets. And if you're connecting with external tools, you can define those connections here. Uh, but we're going to leave the administration and setup process to a separate video. So I'm going to focus really on, I am someone on the product team. I have products that I need to plan releases for, and I need to track those releases. So in that case, I can see that Joe just has one release that he is managing, and that release is for a single, uh, single product. 
Now, this particular release has 11 approvals that will need to be tracked down throughout the course of the release. Uh, none of them are assigned to me, so if I need to, I might need to go track down who I need to get these approvals uh, signed off on. They could be things like QE signing off on user acceptance, they could be legal approvals, a whole host of approvals that might need to happen throughout the course of the release. Now, my release itself is currently green. Um, everything's good, the status is saying that everything's on track, and we can also see the, um, the policies across all of the phases for this particular release. And most are compliant. We have six compliant policies. Two are non-compliant that we'll look at in a little bit. Um, and we have uh, two that haven't been run yet um, because of course this is going throughout the course of the release. So there are some that we just haven't needed to validate just yet. Uh, but over the course of this release, we'll have eight policies that will get validated. Uh, I can also see which releases I own that I need to manage. And down at the bottom, again, uh, connecting back to the 11 open approval tasks, if I need to track people down, then this is where I would be able to see what tasks are open so that I can get those, uh, those approvals completed. Now, before I actually dive in to a release, let's talk a little bit about release planning. So I'm gonna navigate up to my products um, menu navigation. And again, for Joe, I only have one product that I am managing. It's this FMR loan origination. And if I click into the FMR loan origination, we can see some details about this product. We get its name, uh, we get its description, we see that it's, it's currently something that's in production. We can track the features or basically the scope, what it is that these releases are gonna be tracking to make sure they're completed. And we can also create new versions. Versions are what we are ultimately deploying through this release, what we're, what we're validating. And we can define those uh, within these tabs. Now, a uh, note with product features, you can define this scope from within digital product release. So if I move into the product features, I can get the list and I can certainly add features. Uh, however, what we find most customers are going to do is really import them from existing Agile planning tools. So if you are using tools like Agile 2.0, or if you're using Jira, or you're using Azure DevOps, then you can set up connections via the external tools and specify that this is the plan. In this case, we're using Jira as our tool. And I have a project in Jira that has all of our, uh, our epics defined. And we just wanna pull in those top level epics as features and have that happen automatically. So you can specify these are the projects in JIRA. You can also, if your policies um, really track things like code and pipelines and test results, you can also associate source code repositories in GitLab or GitHub. You can associate your CI CD pipelines from tools like Jenkins, Azure DevOps, GitHub Actions, um, and so on. You can even pull in artifact information if you're connected to an artifactory, or you can manage these artifacts manually within ServiceNow. Now we don't pull in your binaries, we're just tracking meta information about the artifacts that you are ultimately deploying. So you have this option, which is a common request that we've gotten from customers on pulling in data from their development tools so the developers can stay in the tools they're used to and we pull that information into ServiceNow and use it. And we'll show you some places that we, we use it beyond just creating your scope for your releases. Now, once that's set up, we have the release plans, which is saying for these, the, the scope, these features that we're working on, what releases are we going to deliver them with? So you can either plan out far into the future, like I have a set of, of features planned for releases going out uh, several releases, or you can just have your next one. That's really up to you as to how far out you like to plan, but planning is just dragging and dropping to move from your backlog into the release that you are working on. Now, I already have a release in progress that we're gonna use, so I'm not going to update that for today. So now that we have our release planned and we've also gone over the optional ability to connect external tools, Let's navigate into a release. And I, since I'm already on the release planning page, I'm gonna do that by clicking on the view release. So now I am on the release dashboard. 
where I'm looking at the details now for a particular release. This release was for the 0 0.9 version of our FMR product. It is currently green and we can see things like our start date. So this release started just a couple of days ago and its end date is toward the end of April. Um, but we also have another date here on our release target date. This is the date that we are trying to have our policies validated by in order to say that we are ready to release. So if you have a deployment that might go on on the 9th or 10th, um, you'd want to have that go, no go decision before that deployment date. And so that's really what this date is tracking is that go, no go date for, um, for the release prior to deployment. We can also see things like a risk score. Now, this risk is quite low because we are at the very beginning of this release. And the risk is calculated by taking how many tasks are overdue uh, and also how many policies are failing, how many are non-compliant. But that is balanced by how many days we have left in this release. While yes, we have two policies failing, there are 66 days remaining. So we have plenty of time to get these policies compliant the closer we get to the end of our release, the higher the risk score becomes. So we can track that just to see if there are any things we need to elevate uh, to let people know about the status of our release. We also have information on the various tasks, change requests, which now have a dedicated connection between release, the features that we're working on. And again, if you are connected to agile planning tools like Agile 2.0 or Jira or Azure DevOps uh, or others, then you would be able to pull in story information as well. Now that we have this overview of what's going on, we don't really have anything wrong. So we're just going to navigate into the release execution to get more details. So now I've moved over to release execution and we can see the overall plan for this release. We had a phase in the beginning that was planning, but everything got planned, so it continued onward. And we're currently in the development phase, which we're going to be in until towards the end of March. So we have the details of what's going on. If your teams uh, want to communicate through the release, we can always track through the activity stream what's going on. We get some information. Uh, but more importantly, really, we're going to spend most of our time on the tasks and the policies. So as I navigate over to tasks, we have a Kanban experience for managing tasks. These can be either what I refer to as kind of regular tasks where these are things that people need to do, but they just move from you know, open work in progress to close complete, or we can track what are approval tasks. And approval tasks are basically tasks that require a standard ServiceNow approval in order to close. So these tasks will not move automatically. They will move based on the task being uh, requested. And ultimately, if we drill into the details, um, this one has been requested until it is approved. Um, it will stay in the, the, open, um, the open state. And then finally, we have our last tab, which are the policies. Now, policies are at the heart of validating that this release is ready. The development phase has eight policies most of which are compliant, but we do have some non-compliant ones. So our non-compliant stories right now is that all of our stories must be completed. That is a, um, uh, that's a, a policy that many customers that I've worked with have had, but, and also the unit tests are passing. Currently there are some failing unit tests that I maybe need to drill into, maybe don't. But these are our set of policies to say that we are finished with a development phase and can move on to our next phase, which is packaging before we get into user acceptance. Your policies, while we will be shipping with a content pack, uh, your policies are really up to you. So if you have only a few policies that you want to leverage, then you would set up as a part of the admin process, the setup process to say what your policies are. What we're doing is bringing the ability to automate the checks that we are compliant or non-compliant. So we don't have to spend as much time gathering information in order to prove that we have completed everything that is necessary to complete in order to say that this release is ready. 
And then finally, let's say that we fast forwarded and we were towards the uh, end or maybe you open change requests uh, early. We do have a dedicated space for the change requests related to this release. And this will show all of the change requests that are related to this release, whether they were opened as a part of a CI CD uh, pipeline. So leveraging DevOps change can raise change requests and link them to a release. Or if they are manually raised, like this one, which was raised by, uh, by Joe. So we have a new button here where I can submit a new change request. It follows the same, um, the same look and feel as uh, the service operations workspace where I can come in, create a change, use our change models. Uh, and ultimately, once the change has been submitted, if I do need to navigate and get more details, I can click into that change and right from here, see the details about the change request itself, see what's been going on, see its status, uh, all making sure that they are connected back to this particular release. Uh, ultimately giving you the ability to understand not only what you are planning to deliver, but the connection to the deploy side, making sure that the change requests themselves are, uh, are finished. So with that, I'd like to thank you for uh, reviewing this overview. We will have more videos going over the setup process and many of these areas in more depth, which we will have in a playlist later. Thank you very much.